The impact on transport hubs and car mm. parking could oh. be massive, couldn't it? I mean, Phenomenal. town centre car parks, we could turn them into flats or shops or whatever we want. On, on the day that we get to something that is not quite 100% autonomous, but close to it, absolutely, an awful lot of that parking space in town centres can be reused for other purposes. I suppose the key difference is that when, when we reach a point where we have driverless technologies in place, technically the vehicles aren't going to be moving without a driver, even if the driver isn't actually doing anything, there is still somebody responsible inside that vehicle who has to start a trip and end a trip. When we get to the autonomous point, that's where the actual vehicles are moving themselves, which is obviously a slightly <laughs> scary concept to most of us at the moment, but that is the reality of where we're going. So in order to make a trip, you are essentially booking a slot within a system to say that you want to start from here and go to there, but that doesn't mean the vehicle's starting and ending at those points. And that's where you can start to find that sort of uh, reuse and regeneration benefit and so on. And I guess what we need to do as well then with planners and transport planners and mm. town planners is actually start to think intelligent as well about how we stop it becoming an inevitable drift back to people just wanting therefore to sit in a car because yeah. if you can think about how we get smart transport interchanges and mass mm -hmm. transit systems working so that uh, an autonomous vehicle becomes a part of your journey Absolutely. and we don't yes. revert to saying well hang on a sec because I presume by then we'll have high speed Wi-Fi everywhere yeah. even this country would have worked out how to do that <laughs> and you know you, all the, all the social economic things about being in a car you'll be able to sit on your phone yes. quite happily you'll be able to eat you'll be able to drink you know, and, and suddenly people might revert to the comfort point and well, I'll just get in my bubble and let that do the whole journey. Yeah. So we'd probably be really intelligent, I think, about how we think about the integration of different transport sure. systems to stop people saying, well, the mode of first point, the transport mode of first choice will be to get back in the car. Because sure. we, we want people to use a mix of things, don't we, to be efficient. I guess that partly comes down to the cost of travel, though, doesn't it? You can sort of see how it would all become one giant, great multimodal system in terms of the way that we move. And it would seem logical that if you choose to make a journey that involves perhaps an autonomous vehicle for part of it and then gets you onto a high-speed rail route and then takes you off at the other end to do whatever you're going to do, you can sort of see how that would need to be a more cost-effective solution than if you did sit in your bubble the entire way up and have a sort of a private uh, <laughs> journey all the way. It's, there are endless permutations, I think, from what I see, that in terms of the menu of choices you could have open to you, and it becomes very much about that door-to-door -door journey not about the different pieces of it that are along the way. Yeah, that's what we really do is I suppose is perhaps we can use a bit of history and what we've done elsewhere to, mm. to really build confidence because we've got yeah. to build people's trust quickly, yeah, haven't absolutely. we? And particularly if these things come on, on the market in, in really quite a rapid way. Yeah. It's not just going to get one or two, is it? I think you can see that there'll, that there'll be just exponential growth in the take up. Mm. So, if, and, if, and if we can win people over on it is a safer way. Yeah, I suppose really what we're going to deal with is people recognise it's much safer it's not perfectly safe is the point you're making but it's uh, considerably yeah. safer than what we currently do exactly so um, and we, and we have to concentrate on that yeah. we accept a risk right now every time we get into a car ourselves whether we're drivers or passengers we accept that there is a risk as associated with that and what we're saying is that this future system would have a far lower risk attached to it which you would think we'd see as a benefit but for, i guess because we are in some way perceived to be giving up some control it's a difficult thing to actually come to terms with but it's the big thing isn't yeah. it humans and perception yeah so absolutely. our perception is because we get into a car every day and our perception is we won't get hurt absolutely and yet yeah. huge numbers of people yeah. do yeah. and we think it won't happen to me of course and somehow we're going to get people to, to actually understand the perception or the fact that they'll be a lot safer mm. in these vehicles i think coming back to the trust point again there's an interesting angle there because this isn't going to happen overnight it simply can't. There is going to be a transition. I agree with you. I think we'll start to see a sort of a curve as we get past a certain point. But we have to start somewhere. There are pieces of infrastructure we could look at. There are types of places we could look at where you could actually introduce some of these technologies sooner, beyond the trials, but into the actual sort of public domain, and, and just see how they work and get people much more familiar with the idea this is something which is a part of the transport system and is more acceptable for a day-to-day -day use. Do, do you think... We'll be able to sell them to people more easily in rural environments where there's less traffic and maybe less perceived danger, although vehicles go faster. Or do you think in uh, semi-urban environments uh, where there's a bit of a mixture mm -hmm. and it's a, it's a growing place, or in the out-and-out -out urban <laughs> environment of the city? Where, where do you think... It's interesting, isn't it? I, I, think there are really, I think each of those places has different challenges now and the opportunity in each case is distinct. I think in the rural areas, I guess it's about connectivity, it's about accessibility, it's about bringing people together in a more social sense as well. 
in, in the suburban type settings. Um, clearly, you know, that, that has a different function in our society now in terms of largely being places where people live as opposed to necessarily where they work. But if you transform the way, that even if it's parked cars down a street that suddenly aren't there anymore, it does actually improve the environment, quality of life and so on. In urban centres, again, it's a different set of issues. Um, there you're talking about congestion, you're talking about the fact you haven't got people circulating around for parking spaces, you've freed up the space that otherwise would have been used for some of those sorts of things otherwise. So there's a whole different range of issues, I think, across all these different places. Safety plays a part in all of those, so does quality of life, so does accessibility, congestion, etc. And all of those have an opportunity attached to them if we can get it right.